Keeping animals is a fantastic way to learn about their behaviour over time and to get to understand them, which has led me to owning lots of native wildlife over the years. Recently, I set up a native fish pond in my garden and I kept perch in my aquarium, both of which I've made videos on the channel. But I wanted to try my hand at a UK river aquarium, so here's how I did it. The perch I previously had had outgrown the tank, so they were released back into the water where I got them from. I then drained the tank with a siphon and emptied into watering cans to use in my garden. I cleaned the tank up, ready for the next stage. First thing was to add river pebbles to look like the bottom of a river. I bought these from a garden centre and recommend giving them a good rinse before adding them to the tank to clean off any dust and dirt. I then add driftwood to look like tree roots and woody debris. You could add wood from the garden, but this could risk leaching from the wood which could kill the fish. Lastly, I add silver sand which is the best as it doesn't cloud up the water. I like to have plants in my aquarium, so I went with Vallis neria, which is really versatile and a European species that looks great in the flow. When it comes to adding water, this is a large tank, so I went with the novel method of putting a hose pipe through my window and filling it up that way, which is much easier. I also added some pond water again to add bacteria and microbes to the tank. I then leave the tank for a couple of weeks to settle and for the plant roots to take hold. The first fish I add to the tank are algae eaters, but unfortunately we don't have any in the UK, so this is where my native tank is going a bit off brand. I try to keep on top of algae by using a solution added to the water and regular cleaning, but there'll always be some in the tank, so having a fish on hand to help keep it down is always beneficial. I went for two algae cleaners that tend to hide away and don't spoil the native look too much. The first is a hillstream loach, which look like mini stingrays, and the other is a sucker loach, but I can't actually remember what species it is, so feel free to comment below if you know. I also added a platy to help eat the algae, but I did remove that eventually, as it was bright red. One of the driftwood pieces started growing white fungus. This can happen with new pieces of driftwood, and it's harmless to fish. The algae eaters will tackle some of this, but it's best to just brush it off and after a couple of goes, it'll disappear. I'm using a Fluvel filter and have it on a more powerful setting to simulate a river's flow. I get asked a lot about do I use a chiller or a cooler? The fact is Cyprinids are quite heat tolerant and can manage temperatures well up to 25 Celsius. The issue is more about oxygen. I've set this tank up in the autumn so my house isn't boiling in a room not facing direct sunlight. When summer comes around, I'll add an air stone to add plenty of oxygen into the water. With my tank being quite big, it won't rise and fall quickly in temperature also. Now where do I source the fish from? Well you've got two options. The first is to catch them. A lot of people may want to collect them fish themselves, and it's great fun, but it's quite labour intensive. And the trouble is finding the right size fish, as you want them as small as possible. You can take fish from the wild, providing you have the landowner's permission and it's not a protected species. One thing to bear in mind is you may well be bringing parasites and diseases into the tank if you are collecting wild fish. So my preferred method is buying them. You can get most native fish now from Aquarius and even buy them online and get them sent to your house. I tend to use DC freshwater fish or MF Aquatics, who is local to me, and can go and collect what species I want, and the exact size I want. They're bagged up with plenty of oxygen, and this means they can last for over 48 hours in there. I place the bag to start with in my office to acclimatise to the room temperature, and then a further hour in the tank before releasing into it. So what native species am I having? There's a lot of choice, and it really comes down to space, how species mix, and how long you want the fish in the tank for, as pretty much all UK fish will outgrow, even the biggest of fish tanks. With it being a river tank, I knew I wanted a chub, barbel and roach, all of which I'll stock into my pond once they outgrow the tank. Currently, they're all about three inches in length, 
so it'll be pretty interesting to see how quickly they grow, given that the tank has a constant temperature and they're being fed. I don't think it'll take long. I've then gone for four minnows, which are probably the best suited fish for UK aquariums. They don't outgrow it, feed really well and look great in a shoal. I'd suggest you have at least three, as they like to go around in groups. I've also got gudgeon, which have a fantastic coloured flank on them, and often pal around with the minnows. Two stone loach are in there, but I next to never see them, as they hide away quite a bit. I did add a little common carp, which isn't causing any issues, but I may end up removing that. I did consider other species like bleak, dace and bream, but feel the chub and roach cover that, and while I love tench, they aren't really a river fish, and a bit slow to the food, so they might get out-competed. Sticklebacks can work really well, but when I've kept them in the past, have been quite territorial, and bite the other fish's fins. Other acarists I know have kept them with success, so it might be worth a go, and if you can get them breeding, are fabulous to watch. The only species I'd think about adding would be bitterling, as they stay small and would shoal up with the others, but these have to be collected, as it's illegal to buy them now, being non-native. If I can get a small grayling, I'd love one, but I think I'd have to move it out in the summer, as it would probably get too warm for it. Bullheads were a temptation, but they prefer live food, which can be tricky to get to them. They're also protected, so you can't buy them, but it is legal to collect them. In terms of feeding, I do this once a day, and it's either frozen tuberfix worms, which they absolutely love, or small pellets. I've mentioned before about fish outgrowing the tanks, so if you aren't having species that will do this, do have an exit strategy. If you have a garden pond, it's the easiest and most stress-free option. If all of your fish are collected from the wild, from the same waterway, and you haven't mixed with any others, then you could release back once they're big enough. But if you've mixed with fish from the pet trade or other waterways, you risk releasing parasites and diseases which can damage wild fish. Well, that's my native river fish tank. Let me know what you think down in the comments and don't forget to like and subscribe. My next project for the spring is to maybe get a small pike. Not in this tank, it'll eat everything. But that's what I'm thinking about. Hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you next time. Cheers. Thanks for watching. If you want to support the channel, liking the video and subscribing to the channel really helps me out. But you can also donate to my buymeacoffee.com link and all the money that from that goes back into making new films for the YouTube channel. Thanks for watching. You can check out some other videos in the links here. Also check out my website and social media as well as the podcast that I host, The Bearded Tits Podcast. Cheers.